Breaking news on CBS Sports HQ. Jawan Howard is going back to Michigan. One of the original members of the Fab Five, the very first one to commit to Michigan back in the early 90s, is going to be the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, according to our very own Gary Parish. Howard has been an assistant coach with the Miami Heat for the past six seasons. He played 19 seasons in the NBA, was the fifth overall pick in the 1994 NBA draft, has no head coaching experience, has no college coaching experience. So this is going to be interesting. Let's break it down with the man who has confirmed the news, Gary Parrish, joining us live here on HQ. Uh, Gary, first off, tell us how this all got done. Well, obviously, Michigan was in a tough spot here. This is a weird part of the calendar to be trying to hire a Division One men's basketball coach, you know, uh, under different circumstances. If John Beeline would have left, you know, at the end of the college basketball season, perhaps Michigan can take a run at somebody like Nate Oates, who obviously has Division One men's coaching experience and had worked in the state of Michigan for more than a decade. But by the time this job opened, Nate had already settled in in, in Tuscaloosa to be the next head coach at Alabama and had no real interest in moving his family again so quickly. So um, Michigan was operating off of a list that was less than ideal. And when Ed Cooley, the Providence coach, pulled out yesterday, I was told right then that the search was centered on Jawan Howard and was probably going to end up landing on Jawan Howard. And so here we are. Truth is, um, I like it, if only because there weren't other great options. This is a high-risk, high-reward situation, but whether it's at Iowa State with Fred Hoiberg or more recently Penny Hardaway at Memphis, we have seen former players uh, do great things at their alma maters, and perhaps Joe Jawan Howard will be the next. And Gary, uh, I know you're very familiar with the Memphis situation, living there in the Memphis area. Do you think that, that, that Penny Hardaway's success on the recruiting trail very early on in his tenure at Memphis had anything to do with Michigan being able to pull the trigger on someone without any head coaching experience and any coaching experience at all in college? But it can't possibly hurt, right? I mean, the, the biggest story in college basketball in recent weeks has been what Penny Hardaway is doing at Memphis. And so if you're a school like Michigan that is trying to rationalize hiring somebody to lead a program that's had incredible history, somebody who um, has never been a head coach, somebody who has never worked on a college campus, um, pointing at Penny Hardaway in Memphis is a good place to start. It can be reassuring. I will say, though, this is not an apples-to-apples apples comparison. You know, Penny and Juwan both starred at the schools at which they're now the head coach, and they went on and both had successful and long NBA careers. That's really where the um, similarities stop. You know, Juwan has been coaching in the NBA, an assistant coach in the NBA for many, many years, and that is valuable experience. But, you know, what Penny was doing was quite different. Penny was working in high schools in Memphis, in the grassroots scene, rooted in Memphis. He lived in this city and developed relationships with prospects and the people who control prospects for several years before getting this opportunity. In other words, when Memphis hired Penny Hardaway, they could be relatively sure that he was going to be able to bring with him the number one prospect in the country, James Wiseman. Why? Because James had spent multiple years playing for Penny. They felt relatively sure that he could bring DJ Jeffries, another top 50 prospect from the area. Why? Because Penny had coached him. Whether Penny would be able to go out and do nationally what he's been doing, going to California, New York, and beating Blue Bloods for um, prospects, that was um, a little bit of an unknown. And he is surprised in that way. But he had undeniable relationships with prospects before he ever got the Memphis job in a way that Jawan Howard simply does not. It doesn't mean Jawan can't develop him, and I think he, he obviously needs to and quickly, but Penny entered uh, the collegiate coaching game with uh, some advantages that Jawan Howard just does not have. Though you, you could make the argument uh, that Memphis had, had a, a much further way to go, and we saw that this season. I mean, Memphis was better, but still, sure. still not to the point of making the NCAA tournament competing for championships. John Beeline had Michigan at a championship level. But what is Jawan Howard going to be dealing with when he walks in the doors again in Ann Arbor, and what's he going to have to do to get this team back up to that Final Four level? Same thing every coach has to do, recruit, 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 because the truth is he takes over this program when they are losing 
um, multiple key players. Iggy Razdakis is going to remain in the NBA draft. Uh, Charles Matthews is in the NBA draft. Michigan is losing three players early um, to professional basketball. So that was going to be a tough, not rebuild, but reload for John Beeline. And that's John Beeline, who is one of the uh, most successful, consistently good coaches in the sport. You know, when you are going to be doing this for the first time and losing everything off of the roster that your predecessor had last season, um, it, it's not easy. This will take, um, you know, it, it's not going to be something that he resolves in a few weeks. I think uh, the first thing juwan has got to do is, is, is hire, put good people around him, put people who can help connect him with the people you need to be connected with to recruit Detroit, capitalize off of his fame, capitalize off of being a member of the Fab Five. You know, Michigan spent decades sort of trying to distance itself from the Fab Five. Now you almost need to embrace that and bring it back and use it as a recruiting tool. Take advantage of Jalen Rose. Take advantage of Chris Weber and try to get Michigan basketball back to where Michigan basketball ought to be, which is somewhere near uh, the top of the sport. To be clear, Juwan Howard's going to do it differently than John Beeline. John, I don't believe, ever enrolled a McDonald's All-American, but developed one player after another into pros who could help him win basketball games. I think Juwan Howard, if he hires the right people and does this the right way, they're going to be able to recruit a better caliber of prospect. And then the goal will be turn them into similar players that Beeline won so much with in recent years. Gary, as you very well know, uh, th this is a Fab Five that uh, in Michigan lore, in college basketball lore, we all we all look back on as a great time. But there are no banners from that 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 Fab Five team hanging in the Michigan rafters because of recruiting issues. Uh, optically speaking, are there going to be people that bash this hire? You know what, maybe 15 years ago or, or in a different time, but um, these days we've got Will Wade still coaching at LSU. We've got Sean Miller still coaching uh, at Arizona. We had a federal trial that exposed how a lot of this stuff um, gets done when it comes to, to amateur athletics. And the Fab Five is probably just the biggest, ex most famous example of that. Um, you know, Bruce Pearl was given a show cause. He's now the coach at Auburn and was in a Final Four. So I, I just really think we're past the point of, of people drawing lines about who can and cannot coach in college basketball and what should uh, institutions be ashamed of and what should institutions be proud of. The truth is um, we don't remember every national champion in men's basketball and football. Sometimes they, they blur together. Everybody remembers the Fab Five, even though they did not win a national championship. It is one of the most iconic basketball teams, two-year runs in, in the history of the sport. And having a member of that um, now leading the Michigan program, um, I, I think, is a pretty uh, neat story and one that I hope the university and, um, and Michigan fans, like I said, embrace. Because undeniably, you know, um, amateur status of players was compromised by a big-time booster in According to the NCAA rules, the way they're written, there's a price you have to pay for that, and part of it is vacating your achievements. But um, you can't vacate the memories. We still have vivid memories of that team, and having a member of it as the face of Michigan basketball, like I said, kind of a neat story. They were as cool as they come. Juwan Howard was the first of those Fab Five to commit to Michigan. He is now the head coach, or it, it will be in the coming hours and days. The head coach of the Michigan Wolverines are Gary Parrish confirming the news that they have agreed to terms with Juwan Howard to replace John Beeline, who is now the head coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. We now bring in another college basketball expert for us, Matt Norlander, who covers the sport for us year-round on CBSSports.com and CBS Sports HQ. Just interested to hear uh, your general reaction to this hiring. Well, it's fascinating because there's no guarantee this is going to work. Uh, the NBA player, Chris, the NBA player to college hedge coach, bad. It's showing some real gains with Penny Hardaway on the recruiting trail. We're going to see if Penny Hardaway can maintain a winning culture there. Patrick Ewing still working through it at Georgetown. Chris Mullen was a complete flame out at St. John's. You go on down the line. Sydney Lowe at North Carolina State didn't work. Now, you got to remember, that's going to be an easy talking point, but each institution, each coach is different. But undeniably, Juwan Howard brings a real NBA cachet uh, to Michigan. He brings back the shine of the Fab Five era, which is actually...